Welcome to Kohalen's uh, Adventures Update number 86. This is the one I'm calling Walking on the Moon, because that's why I felt after last week's cavalcade of shows. Uh, and I'll be talking more about that. But first, the numbers. We went from 1578 Adventures to 1597, so a little bit back to form. And we went from 9.7 thousand watch hours to 10.0 or 10 10k watch hours so uh steady growth on that and last week man four amazing shows and i'm going to get into them a little bit for you but the first one wednesday afternoon i had an interview with dan Byrne, um who i saw friday night so i actually i posted the interview that i did the following the last friday on wednesday so that could get a few people it was a sold out show um and it's it's a nice interview with dan so uh give that a shot if you can um thursday night at the orpheum theater in downtown los angeles clanted the long awaited um final farewell concert that i've been waiting since 2020 2022 2023 that's 2023, 2021. Um, it just it kept on getting canceled or postponed and then finally canceled last year. So I, I actually thought I'd never see them. Um, but they did come back and last minute deal uh, with the concert I went to for the Ed Asner charity with uh, Ringo and Toto and Stone Temple Pilots and Joe Bonamassa and Huba Stank and uh, Colin Hay, I think. Um, I bought the ticket that night and then went. So there's a lot of footage. About half of it I haven't been, been able to put up yet because there's so much material from this last week that I'm, I'm staggering. I'm doing like one or two songs of each artist. And then I had a bunch of archival stuff that I've been putting up like Ambrosia or... Um, Eric Burden and the animals, uh, and and other videos. So I'm, I have over 700 videos that I've uploaded, but they're still in the draft form. They haven't been uh, made into the private form so that they're ready to get the thumbnails put onto them and then published. So it's it's a, a lot of stuff to get up there. So. Stay tuned, there's more to come. Clanid was was just amazing. It's Celtic music. If you're not familiar with them, you might have heard their music in Last of the Mohicans or um, Harry's Game or the British um, TV series Robin Hood. Uh, I think Richard Armstrong, who was uh, in the Hobbit movie as Thorin Oakenshield, uh, played the dastardly uh, prince, uh, not Prince John, but uh, his, his sheriff, Sheriff of Nottingham or whatever. Anyway, uh, so you might know their music, but they, their harmonies are amazing. Two of the original members have passed away uh, before COVID. Um, the, the Dunnigan cousins? But the, the Brennans, um, or the Brennan family, are still represented. The, the two brothers and the sister, Marie or Moya uh, Brennan, uh, their harmonies are amazing. They had a drummer who was really good, who was not part of the family, but the keyboardist and guitarist, lutist, multi-instrumentalist uh, woman behind Moya um, was her daughter and her son on the keyboard so a very family affair uh some some great songs my one lament is that the my favorite song of theirs uh come glass on fu i i can't pronounce it properly but it's just a haunting melody they did it up until the birchmere in virginia and they dropped it i asked after the show and they said there was a tuning issue which breaks my heart because it's basically guitar and vocals so um 
who knows but I got to see them so that was wonderful then on to Friday night uh, I got to see Dan Byrne for the first time since 2019 when he's the bootleg theater and um, then COVID hit of course and things went wacky in the world uh, but he had his new group the Needles pop group and it's uh, Needlequake is the name of the album it's coming out shortly you should be able to get it soon on all regular sources um, but they did a lot of those songs and also a lot of Dan songs so it was wonderful um, the band is Dan and Oritz Shimoni uh, on vocals and accordion and various other things Paul Kuhn on guitar violin um, cello caster uh, an instrument he created and um, Adam Bush played drums and also all of them sang so uh, a very cool thing um, so that and just the harmonies that they put together w was really amazing and then some of Dan's famous songs like Jerusalem and uh, Tiger Woods and uh, a new song about uh, uh, Otani the it, it check it out it's it's a very humorous take on is there one or two Otanis anyway um, and then Saturday night Oh, 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 before I go to Saturday night, Friday night, before going to the show, I stop off at my favorite place to hang out before the show. It's called the Brixton, and it's just like maybe two to five blocks north uh, on uh, Pico from McCabe's Guitar Shop. And I walk in there, and I, I have a little video that I don't know if I posted here. I, I'll try and get it, because um, I also did one from uh, the Orpheum Theater. I posted them on my Facebook page, but I'll, I'll try and get them over here as well. Um, their bathroom, their men's bathroom, has all these posters from the Santa Monica Civic of all these great groups. So I took a little video of all of that while I was in there. Um, unfortunately, the, it's either the urinal or the toilet had a automatic flush and it just went off during the middle of it. So that wasn't me, I was walking around already. Anyway. Um, but so I go to the, the bar and I sit down and I ask if they, they have a happy hour sign there. And I say, you know, what have you got uh, beer wise? And the woman to the mine to next, the one next to me uh, goes, are you Rick Contis? Which blew my mind. And it's like, yes. <laughs> and she was one of the hunker to the bunker hunkeristas. Um, and how she recognized my voice, I'm not sure. Maybe she saw the the interview. Maybe that's why it was so fresh in her mind or something. But it it's one of those biofeedback moments. Uh, I won't give her a name, but uh, she goes by Atlanta or Hotlanta, and her husband John. And it was just a great conversation before the show, uh, and we hung out a little bit after the show to see Dan and uh, and the, the other band members. It was just a great evening. So that's part of the, the joy and the magic of going to a live concert is the stories and the, the moments that you capture live and the, the play off of the musicians with the audience. It's just uh, why I go and why you should go too. Um, okay, back to Saturday night maybe a week before the show. Um, a friend of mine, a guitarist and drum Romo, uh, Mr. E-Boy, uh, posted on Facebook, I, I have a gig, I can't go, uh, anybody want the ticket? And so I contacted and we arranged the details to, to make that happen. So I'm, I'm in just above the middle, but dead center, uh, like, terraces going up in the Hollywood Bowl um, so it's it's not a bad seat I was about one over from the aisle uh, and it pretty much 
just left the dead center. So I had a good view. Uh, hopefully the views will do that. I, I had a little bit of a snafu. A friend offered to uh, bump me up to a, one of the boxes down below, but that sort of didn't work out. And also when I was trying to record the first couple of songs, either I didn't push the button on the cell phone correctly and I wasn't recording and I just snapped a photo instead. Um, I could kill myself for that, but I missed Englishman New York. I got part of, um, oh, what was the first song? One of his big ones. Anyway, um, I have footage from all but like one or two of the songs and one of them has me scurrying from the seat I'd, I'd been in the, the boxes back up to my own seat to catch the rest of the show so um after that it's, it's pretty steady except for you know sometimes a flock of people have decided to get up and leave at the same time so you see a cavalcade of of people exiting in front of the camera and i try and swivel off to one of the side screens so i can get something of while the music's playing because the music goes through bodies but not the visuals so anyway uh, but an amazing selection of, of songs. It was, it was the My Songs tour for Sting. And it's one of those events that I kind of had given up that I, I'd ever have a chance to see him. But this opportunity came up and just a stunning show. The, the lighting, I always have a problem with Hollywood Bowl. Is they, they have these big white spotlights and they scan them up into the audience. Uh, and most of the time it just bleaches out everything you're seeing, whether you're using a camera or just your own eyes. It's just, you have to look a, a way to avoid being blasted by these white light cannons of, of projection. So that's my, my commentary on lighting for the Hollywood Bowl or any other place that does that. Um, I think the Coach House does that sometimes where they just, have lights and, and it, the white light is what's the purpose of having a white light blasting people's eyes up anyway sunday night late show marcus miller at the catalina club and marcus miller has seen twice before once was um a couple of years back before covid at the hollywood bowl for the in fact i've only seen the hollywood bowl until now uh anyway uh it was the black music soundtrack show and they had people like Chaka Khan and El Barge, and I think there was a surprise guest appearance uh, by Snoop Dogg uh, and just and they're what they're doing is they're playing footage on the back screen of black m movies or black black exploitation movies at times um, but the music that was in that they're playing that and then they have various uh, people singing those parts. Um, I, also, instrumentalist uh, Marcus Miller played on one. I think Esmeralda, Esperanza Spalding was one of the guest artists, and also um, another woman bass player whose name I can never additional anyway. You might know who I'm trying to say, but I can't remember her name, but it was a great night. And then the last time was just a couple of months ago, the um, Herbie Hancock tribute to Twain Shorter that also had Ron Carter, uh, Jack DeJanet, I think one song. Um, Marcus is also playing with them, so just a wonderful treat. I have those videos up. You can check them out as well if you want. So anyway, Marcus Miller is an amazing bass player. And he had a, a great band. His drummer was a guy named Anwar Marshall. Uh, really, really kept the the rhythm section solid. Um, sax player um, Donald Hayes, uh, Russell Gunn on trumpet, and he, he at times channeled Miles Davis, who Marcus had played with. So uh, very good selection. Keyboard player named... Um, Xavier Gordon and there was a guest uh, musician named Leon Timbo who I'd never heard of before great vocalist singer songwriter and before 
Leon's second song, or maybe the, it was the third song, uh, before the third song, Marcus goes into a bass um, thing of the Happy Birthday song because Chaka Khan's birthday was that night and she was in the audience at the Late Show, which I was at. So that was very cool. And at the end of the show, I got to say hi to her and wish her happy birthday and mention some of our mutual friends. So it, it was a nice little moment. So that was the week. It was a lot, a lot of late hours because I, I get home at 11, 12, 1 in the morning and I'd be uploading my, my footage to my computer. And then I sometimes I'd try and label the songs mm -hmm. and upload them. Otherwise, I would um, just wait till the morning and then label and upload. It was a long time to, to try and catch up, and I'm still catching up because there's so much footage out there uh, from those just those four shows. So that was last week. Now onto this week. Um, today, after this, I'm doing an interview with Donald Barrett, uh, who is the drummer. No, not on that video, but he, he, I first saw him with Alan Hines' group, and he's played with the Cookies, or on that picture, um, that video. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'll let you discover the various groups he's been in uh, on the interview, which will air this Sunday um, at noon. So check that out. Uh, but he, he's a very cool guy, great drummer, great human being, just great personality. So... Um, and then I don't really have any other shows. There are a couple of shows I could go to by um, financially and emotionally or energy wise. I'm just, I'm going to take it easy this week and just catch up with all the videos. So, um, Sunday is the Salty Sweets at a house concert. Uh, you might've seen some of the Salty Sweets videos from before. If you haven't, please dig into them. There's, there's a lot of great music they've gone from having a mandolin player, Scott Gates, who is now in A.J. Lee and the Blue Summit uh, up in Northern California, but they replaced him with a guy named Mark, and I should know that name, but I didn't. Uh, sorry about that. Um, but uh, they're going to be playing at this place called The Orchard, uh, where I just recently saw somebody else uh, come on oh um three three honk members uh beth and steve wood and richard steckel i saw them there and before i was at a concert um was it before covid no it's just oh okay yeah just a year or two ago uh, freebo and alice howe uh, we're playing there as well, and that's where I discovered, by way of Charlie Hunter, from the music that was playing in the break time, um, Kurt Elling, who, ironically, Saturday night, I could have seen Charlie Hunter uh, and and Kurt Kurt Elling at a place called the Tarragon, in, just west of downtown LA. I could have seen. Um, Stu Ham band with Toshi and Agi and um, not sure the drummer um, or I could have gone down to Com Campus Jacks which I was going to do because I hadn't seen them before and see uh, the Bus Boys from most people might remember them from the uh, Boys Are Back in Town from the credits in the movie 48 Hours uh, Eddie Murphy movie but um Luckily, that's available to watch online. Go to Campus Jacks Live and look up the Bus Boys. You can watch the whole show there. So, um, I got to do two and be in one place at all at the same time. Anyway, um, so uh, again, today I've got the interview with Donald Barrett in just half an hour and the Salty Sweets, and then Possibly after the Salty Sweets at Campus Jacks is Ron Kobayashi Trio with Jerry Mandel and the Irvine Barkley Jazz Ensemble and a singer named uh, Deanne Dyson. 
So those are possibilities that I'm, I might add the, the Ron Kobayashi because it's, it's very close, it's right after it, so I might do that. Um, the other possibilities would be at um, the baked potato, um, and that would be, what? oh, uh, Friday, Ernie Watts at the baked potato, who I'd love to see, and then Saturday, Lawrence Tuber's airfoil at um, McCabe's Guitar Shop again, but again, just pure concert going exhaustion and finances this is the time of the month where i have to save up my money for my car payment uh so i'll probably just be working those days but until then you you i mean you get out to a concert and post what you've seen let me know who you enjoy seeing and we'll be back next week with what i've seen last week and what's coming up next so until then much love Take care. Get thee to a concert. Bye.